Hi, I am Teacher Jonah, and I will teach you some basic Bisaya greetings. Are you ready? Number one, good morning. Maayong buntag. Maayong buntag. Maayo means good. Buntag means morning. NG is the connector for maayo and buntag. Maayong buntag. Good morning. And what will be your reply? You will just add pud at the end. Maayong buntag pud. Maayong buntag. Your reply is maayong buntag pud. Number two. Good noon. Maayong uddo. Maayong uddo. Maayo, good. Uddo, noon. NG is the connector. Maayong uddo. Good noon. Your reply, just add pud. Maayong uddo pud. Maayong uddo. Maayong uddo pud. Number three. Good afternoon. Maayong hapon. Maayong hapon. Maayo, good. Hapon, afternoon. And G is the connector. Maayong hapon. Good afternoon. Your reply, just add pud. Maayong hapon pud. Maayong hapon. Maayong hapon pud. Maayong hapon. Number four. Good evening. Maayong gabi i. Maayong gabi i. Maayo, good. Gabi i, evening. And G is the connector. Maayong gabi i. The reply? Yes. Maayong gabi i pud. Maayong gabi i. Maayong gabi i pud. If you know the person you are greeting, you can add their name before or after your greeting. Like for example, when you see me and you want to greet me, you know my name, that's Jonah. You can just say, Jonah, maayong buntag. Or, maayong buntag, Jonah. And you can do that for the rest of the greetings depending on the time of the day. The same applies for the reply. You can add the name before or after your reply to the greeting. Example, I will greet you. Maayong buntag, Katie, your reply would be? Maayong buntag po, Jona. Or, Jona, maayong buntag po. Like that. And you do that for the rest of the greeting replies. Let us have a practice. I will be greeting you and you should reply. Let's just say, for example, your name is Mr. X. Since I do not know your name. Okay, let's practice. For example, it's morning. Mayong buntag, Mr. X. It's noon. Mayong uddo, Mr. X. It's afternoon. Mayong hapon, Mr. X. It's evening. Mayong gabi, Mr. X. Another practice. So you will be greeting me and you will start with morning, then noon, and then afternoon, and then evening. Let's start. Go ahead. Maayong buntag po, Mr. X. Maayong uddo po, Mr. X. Maayong hapon po, Mr. X. Maayong gabi po, Mr. X. Now, you might hear some Bisaya people reply with this word, sad. Alright? So, let's not be technical. They actually use pud or sa sad. Okay? So, they usually interchange it. But they both mean the same. They are a reply. Example, you would say, Mayong buntag. And then they would reply, Mayong buntag sad. Or, Mayong utto sad. Mayong hapon sad. Maayong gabi sad. Like that. Next, after you have greeted somebody, you want to say, how are you, right? So, in Bisaya, how are you is, Kumusta man ka? Or, Kumusta ka? Or, 
kumusta? Usually, we use, kumusta man ka? When that person is your friend and you haven't met him or her for a very long time. Kumusta man ka? Kumusta ka? And kumusta are both the same. You can use them when it is your first time to meet that person and you just plainly want to ask them how are they. Okay? Kumusta ka? Or kumusta? Kumusta ka? Kumusta? And what would be the reply? It's maayuman. 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 It means that you are good, you are fine, you're doing great. Maayuman. Kumusta ka? Maayuman. Some Bisaya people actually borrow English words. So, when you greet them, Kumusta man ka? Kumusta ka? Or kumusta? They would sometimes reply like this. Okay ra? Okay ra man? Okay kayo. It means that they are okay. Okay ra? Okay man? Okay kayo. When they say okay kayo, it means that they are very, 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 very okay. And usually when they do it in this tone, okay kayo, it means that you are close to them and they are uh, saying they are good in a joking way. Okay kayo. Let's have a practice. Let's have a conversation with Besaya. Okay? Example, it is morning and I saw you. I will be greeting you and you should reply, okay? And then I will be imagining that your name is Miss Y. Ready? Let's start. Mayong buntag, Miss Y. Kumusta man ka, Miss Y? Good job! I am happy that you somehow learned in this uh, simple lesson. And if you really want to learn more about learning Bisaya, just click the subscribe button and I will do my best to teach you what I know. Thank you so much. Goodbye! Hi! My name is Jonah and I am here to teach you how to introduce yourself in Bisaya. Are you ready? Previously, we have discussed basic Bisaya greetings. I hope that you still remember all of them because you will be using them today in our introductions. If you missed the video, the video is right there. In this lesson, I will teach you five common questions that Bisaya people ask you for them to get to know you better. I will also teach you how to properly respond in its simplest way for these questions. Number one, what is your name? Unsa imong pangalan? Unsa imong pangalan? Unsa means what? Imong means your. Pangalan means name. Unsa imong pangalan? Unsa imong pangalan? The best and simplest reply for that question would be, Ako si, and then you provide your name. Ako si Jonah. Ako si Jonah. To make it more formal, we can say our full name, complete name. Ako si Jonah Gonzalez. Ako si Jonah Gonzalez. Number two, how old are you? Pila imong idad. Pila imong edad? Pila, it is a question to ask about the number. Imong means your. Edad means your age. Pila imong edad? Pila imong edad? The simplest way to answer that question would be Blank, your age. Akong edad. 26 akong edad. Example, if you are 26 years old, you can say 26 akong edad. In my case, I am 31, so I would say 31 akong edad. 31 akong edad. Number 3. When is your birthday? Kanus a imong adlaw natauhan. Kanus a imong adlaw natauhan. 
Kanus a means when. Imong means your. Adlaw natauhan means birthday. Adlaw natauhan. Adlaw natauhan. Kanus a imong adlaw natauhan. And the simplest way to answer kanus a imong adlaw natauhan would be the date of your birth and you say ko natawo. June 16, 1989, ko natawo. Or you can just erase the year and you would say, June 16, ko natawo. Ko means me, natawo means born. June 16, ko natawo. Number four, where do you live? Tagaasa ka. Tagaasa ka. Tagaasa ka. Asa means where. Ka means you. Taga, it is a question that Bisaya use for them to ask about location. Taga-asa ka. Taga-asa ka. When Bisaya asks you this question, they could mean they are interested where, which country where are you from? Or if you are a co-Filipino who is a non-Bisaya speaker, Tagaasa ka means they want to know where you are specifically from in the Philippines. Or they could mean, where are you residing exactly? What is your address? Tagaasa ka. Here's the simplest way to answer that question. You can say, taga, then insert the address or the country. And then you say, ko. Taga, America ko. Taga America ko or Taga Philippines ko. I am from the Philippines, so I would say Taga Philippines ko. If a Filipino is asking me Taga Asa ko, I would say Taga Davao ko. Taga Davao ko. Number five, the last one. What are your hobbies? Unsa imong mga hilig? Unsa imong mga hilig? Unsa means what? Imong means your. Mga, it means uh, plural, okay? Mga. And then hobbies, okay? Hobbies, that's hilig. Hilig. Actually, the direct translation of hilig is like, but Bisaya people, if they're asking about your hobbies, they would just use, Unsa imong mga hilig? Unsa imong mga hilig? The simplest way to answer unsa imong mga hilig would be ganahan ko and then you insert your hobbies. Like, ganahan ko means I like. Ganahan means like. Ko means I. Ganahan ko in this case, let's say uh, you love learning Bisaya. So you would say, ganahan ko magtuon og Bisaya. Magtuon means study. Og is a connector going to what do you want to study? Bisaya. Ganahan ko magtuon o Bisaya. Or you can change the Bisaya into another language. Ganahan ko magtuon o English. Or ganahan ko magtuon o Tagalog. Or ganahan ko magtuon o Spanish. Or if you want to insert your hobbies like cooking and then you don't know the Bisaya yet, you could say, Ganahan ko, ganahan ko, og cooking. Og means uh, you are about to say a list of things that you like. Ganahan ko og cooking, racing, um, running, sports, writing. Ganahan ko og studying, ganahan ko og watching news, movies. Finally, we can introduce ourselves fully from our name down to our hobbies. You usually do this when you are standing in a crowd and they ask you to introduce yourself or when, when you are in an interview and uh, they are really interested about you and they would say, introduce yourself in Bisaya. So this is how it goes. You start with a greeting 
and then you say kumusta which means hello and then you start with your name and then your age and then your birthday and then your place where do you live and the last would be your hobbies i hope that you have listed everything okay let's start Example, it's morning. Mayong buntag. Kumusta? Ako si Jonah. 31 akong edad. June 16, 1989 ko natawo. Taga Davao ko. Ganahan ko magtuon o bisaya. Now it's your turn. Just fill in the blanks and try to introduce yourself in bisaya. I hope that you have learned something and I hope that you can apply the new words that you have learned today. Thank you so much! Hi! My name is Jonah. Kumusta? Ako si Jonah and welcome to Bisaya Classroom. Today, I will teach you six useful Bisaya polite words and phrases. And then afterwards, we will be having an activity. So please finish the video so that you can really assess if you learned something. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe so that you will be notified on my next Bisaya lessons. Number one, thank you. Salamat. Sa la mat. Salamat. Thank you very much. Daghang salamat. Daghang salamat. Daghang salamat is actually um, many thanks when you translate it directly because daghan means many. Salamat means thanks or thank you. G is just the connector. So when you really translate daghang salamat, it means many thanks. But Daghang salamat is commonly understood in Bisaya as thank you very much. Salamat. Daghang salamat. After someone says salamat or daghang salamat to you, you should reply. You could say, walay sapayan. Walay sapayan. In English, it's you are welcome. In Bisaya, it's walay sapayan. Or you can just remove the L-A and you just replace it with an apostrophe and then you can pronounce it as Y Sapayan to make it a little shorter. Y Sapayan or Walay Sapayan. Sometimes Visaya people would also reply with Walay Problema or Why Problema. So Walay Problema or Why Problema, it means no problem. It's fine, no problem. Why problema? Walay problema. Number three, sorry. In Bisaya, it's still sorry. Good news, right? Sorry. In Bisaya, it's still sorry. But when you are really, really sorry, you could just replace it with pasailu ako. Pasailu ako. It means, please forgive me. Meaning you are really begging for forgiveness. Pasailu ako. Pasailu ako. Number four. Please. In Bisaya, it's palihug. Palihug. Pa-li-hug. Palihug. Palihug. Number five. Excuse me. In Bisaya, it's still excuse me. That's good news, right? Excuse me. Number six. This is a magic word when you go to a place where you know, majority speaks Bisaya. When you visit a house, and uh, usually when you visit somebody's house, you would say, hello, is someone there? Hello. Instead of saying that one, uh, Bisaya people usually do this. Ayo! Ayo! They knock the door and they would say, Ayo! Ayo, Micah? Ayo? Ayo, Jonah? Now it's time for our activity. So in this activity, I will say the English 
word or phrase and then you would say it in Bisaya. Just try. I know you can do it. Okay, number one. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Please. Sorry. How about please forgive me? Excuse me. How about when you knock on the door, what will you say? Good job. Now that you have those useful, polite Bisaya words and phrases, go ahead and try to show off to your Bisaya friends. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please don't forget to subscribe so that you will be notified when I open another lesson. See you on the next classes in the Bisaya Classroom. Do you want to express your love and admiration in Bisaya? Or you are wondering if that special someone in your mind likes or loves you in return? Well, you've come to the right place. Kumusta ako si Jonah? Hello, my name is Jonah and welcome to Bisaya Classroom. Today, we are going to discuss five common signs that someone possibly likes or loves you. And along with these signs, I am going to teach you also the common Bisaya phrases that they usually utter. But before we start, please click the subscribe button so that you will be notified on my next Bisaya lessons. First sign that someone likes or loves you, they will show that they care. The three common phrases that they usually utter are the following. Amping, kauna, ayaw paguto. Amping is a very magical word in Visaya. Amping means take care. They usually use it when somebody lives before them. For example, you are in a party and you care for that person who is about to leave. So you would say, Amping! Amping, or you can add the word ha to make it more sweeter. Amping ha. The next phrase is kauna. Kauna. It means you eat. When this person is always reminding you to eat, it means he or she is concerned about you. And being concerned to someone is one way of expressing their admiration or their love. Kauna. Kauna. And it connects to the third common phrase, which is Ayaw paguto. Ayaw paguto. Ayaw means don't. Pagutum means starve. Don't starve yourself. Ayaw pagutum. Kauna. Ayaw pagutum. Meaning that person is deeply concerned about your health. And if that person is always using this, it means they love you. Common person who says this to us is our parents. They usually remind us to eat properly because they love us. So if that someone special is always reminding you to eat and to not to starve, kaon na ayaw pagutom, it's most likely that he or she likes or even loves you. The second sign, they want to spend time with you person who likes or loves you wants to spend a lot of time with you and they will use all of the excuses to do that and these are the common desire phrases that they usually alter when they want to spend time with you kita taugma or ubaniko sa palihog manglaag ta sa let us discuss first the first phrase kita ta uma kita ta means see you or let's meet, kita ta, ugma means tomorrow. Kita ta ugma, it means that person wants to see you again tomorrow. Or if you want to change ugma, you can change it with another day. You will just add sa. Kita ta sa, Sunday. Or 
Kita ta sa Wednesday. Kita ta sa Friday. Ubaniko sa blank paliho. Ubaniko means come with me. Ubaniko come ko me. Ubaniko sa and then you insert the the place and then we have paliho. If you remember our previous lesson on polite words and phrases in Visaya, palihog means please. Ubaniko sa school palihog. Ubaniko sa restaurant palihog. Manglaag ta. Manglaag ta sa. Manglaag ta means let's go out, let's go around, let's enjoy the place. Manglaag ta. When you say manglaag ta, you are asking somebody to come with you and explore the place. There's no particular place yet. So, if you have a particular place in your mind, you can add the location. Manglaag ta sa park. Manglaag ta sa mall. Manglaag ta sa food court. Number three. That person would always appreciate you. They will always find time to look at something they want to appreciate. They will always see the positive side in you. They usually utter this phrase. Ganahan ko sa imong blank. Ganahan ko sa imong blank. Ganahan means like. Ko, I, sa imong means your. And then you add the thing that you like. Ganahan ko sa imong ilong. Ganahan ko sa imong mata. Ganahan ko sa imong buhok. Ganahan ko sa imong ngabil. Ganahan ko sa imong tingog. Or eventually, they would really like everything about you and they would just simply say, Ganahan ko nimo. Ganahan ko nimo means, I like you. But when some... Number four, a person who likes or loves you would miss you. Imingaw ko nimo. Imingaw ko nimo. Gimingaw ko nimo. It means I miss you. Gimingaw miss ko ay nimo you. Gimingaw ko nimo. Or sometimes Visaya people would just usually shorten it and they would say, Mingaw ko nimo. Mingaw ko nimo, Jonah. Gimingaw ko nimo, Jonah. Mingaw ko nimo. Last sign that someone likes or loves you is that person you are thinking about will confess it. And in Visaya, kanang kuan na ako iingon ni mo. Kuan nakagusto ko ni mo. I found a love. Kihigug matika. Okay, let's first discuss kanang, kuan. Kanang and kuan are common fillers in Visaya. They usually utter it when they are still thinking what are the next phrases to say next. Na ako iingon ni mo. Na ako. I have iingon. Ni mo means say to you. Na ako iingon ni mo means I have something to say to you. Na ako ingo ni mo. Nakagusto ko ni mo. Nakagusto ko ni mo means I like you. But, nakagusto ko ni mo and ganahan ko ni mo is uh, quite similar but nakagusto ko ni mo is more on uh, on a romantic way. So, if somebody says nakagusto ko ni mo, it's he or she likes you as a woman or a man in a romantic way. Whereas, ganahan ko ni mo, it's really not like that. Lastly, we have the phrase, the wonderful phrase, Gihigugma tika. It means, I love you in Visaya. Gihigugma tika. Gihigugma tika. Sometimes, if the person is very confident, he will not use any fillers at all. He would say, Na ako iingon ni mo. Nakagusto ko ni mo. Gihigugmati ka. Thank you so much. If you like my lesson, please give me a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so that you will be notified on my next lessons. Thank you so much and see you next time in the Bisaya Classroom. Maayong Adlaw! Ako si Jonah. Good day! My name is Jonah and welcome to Bisaya Classroom. Today, we are going to learn about the body parts in Bisaya. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified on my next lessons. Are you ready? Ulo 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 Buhok Buhok Agtang Agtang Kilay Kilay Mata 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 Pinok 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 Ilong 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 Aping 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 Ba 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 Nabil 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 Nipon Nipon Dila Dila Suwang 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 Dalunggan 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 Liog 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 Abaga Abaga Siko 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 Kamot 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 Tudlo Tudlo Kuko Kuko Palad 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 Dughan 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 Tian 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 Busun 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 Paa 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 Tuhod 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 Bitiis Or batiis Bitiis Bitiis Tiil 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 Lapa-lapa 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 that's it! I hope that you have learned something. If you want to learn the internal body parts in Bisaya, just comment down below and I will make a video about that. 
thank you so much for watching i hope that you will subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified on my next lessons see you next time in the bisaya classroom Hello once again, my name is Jonah and welcome to Bisaya Classroom. Our lesson for today is about the pleasant Bisaya words and phrases. So um, we will be discussing the Bisaya words and phrases which are nice to hear. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to, number one, identify the pleasant words and phrases in Bisaya. Number two, use these pleasant words and phrases in a sentence. And number three, appreciate the importance of saying good things to others. Also, at the end of this lesson, you will answer the 10-item short quiz. Um, this quiz is placed at the end of this lesson for you to check yourself if you really learned something. But before we start, I please request you to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified. We shall start. Number one, guapo. Guapo. Guapo means handsome. You usually say it to a male or a man or a boy. Uh, special shout out to Mas Guapo Ako. Uh, he told me that he was able to learn something from the previous lesson on Bisaya words and phrases for traveling. Hello, mas guapo ako. I hope that you will learn a lot more on this lesson. Next is guapo ko. Guapo ko, it means I am handsome. So when you put the word ko, it pertains to the speaker. So guapo ko, meaning I am handsome. Guapo ka, it means you are handsome. So when you use ka, it means you are talking to another person. Okay? Ko is for you, while ka is for another person. So when you say guapo ka, you're saying you are handsome. Guapa means beautiful. So you usually say to girls. Okay, girls, um, yeah, female. Guapa ko, meaning the speaker is beautiful so she's saying i am beautiful guapa ko but when you say guapa ka it means you are beautiful so you are describing the person in front of you guapa ka nindot nindot means nice or beautiful you usually um, use it this word to appreciate a thing or a quality or a place okay guapo is also the same with nindut a while ago i told you that guapa means hands handsome but um uh, bisaya people they usually interchange guapo to nindut okay guapo or nindut they are interchangeably used to describe beautiful things or nice things beautiful places or nice places beautiful happenings or nice happenings guapo and nindot okay let's use guapo or nindot in a sentence example you would say you have a nice car so you shall say nindot ka og sakyanan Nindut ka og sakyanan. Sakyanan means car or a vehicle. Nindut ka og sakyanan. Nindut ka og sakyanan. Remember, ka, it means you, right? Okay, nindut ka og sakyanan. Or, guapo ka og sakyanan. So, guapo and nindut can be used interchangeably. 
gwapo ka og sakyanan. Nindot ka og sakyanan. We can also have nindot ka og balay or gwapo ka og balay. It means you have a nice house. Balay means house. Okay? You have a nice house. Nindot ka og balay or gwapo ka og balay. Nindot ka og tingog or gwapo ka og tingog. It means you have a nice voice. Tingog means voice in Bisaya. Nindot ka og tingog. Gwapo ka og tingog. Nindot ka og sanina or gwapo ka og sanina. It means you have a nice dress. Sanina is dress. Next is palanga. Palanga as a noun means as a person or someone you love or care about. Okay? Palanga, it means uh, it uh, identifies or meaning you are pertaining to the person you love or you care. It can be your family members, it can be your friends, it can be your special someone. Palanga, or you can shorten it to panga, panga. It means the same. It's just shortened. Panga. Panga. You can use it to call that person. Panga. Or you can shorten it a little further. Ga. Ga. Hello, ga. Hello, ga. Okay. Next, palanga as a verb, it means loving or love or care or caring. So, let me use that one in a sentence. Palangga nako si mama. Meaning, I love my mother. Palangga, that's the verb there. Nako, it means the possessive one, my. And then, si mama means mother. Mama is mother. Si there is just a, um, it's just a connector. Okay? Or, I love my mother. It's palangga na ko si mama. Um, palangga na ko si mama could also mean I care for my mother. Okay? So, you can change si mama. You can make it like uh, your father. Palangga na ko si papa. So, in Bisaya, mama and papa. Or, uh, they would also use... Uh, Nanay or tatay. Nanay for mother. Tatay for father. Again, palangga is love or loving as a verb or care or caring. We also have this phrase palangga tika which means I love you or it could also mean I care for you. Palangga tika. Palangga tika. Don't worry, palangga tika. We also have this phrase, gihigugma tika, which means I love you. When you were, when you listened to my previous lessons on uh, polite words and, no, 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 it's not the polite words and phrases. It's the five, um, five signs that someone likes or loves you. You can check out that lesson on my channel. So, I told you that ihigugmatika is I love you. So, what is the difference between palangatika and gigugmatika? So, gigugmatika solely means I love you. It's, it's um, the deepest um, I love you phrase in Bisaya. Gigugmatika meaning I love you because the root word there, gugma, means love while palangga tika it can mean i love you but half of it means i care for you okay but when you go to the deeper meaning of loving just use gihigugmatika it means i love you because gugma means 
love. Next is lami. Lami means delicious. Okay, usually you say this word when you are eating, when you're describing food. Lami. Lami aoy. Lami aoy. It means, wow, it is delicious. Usually you say it when you have tasted a food and because it is so delicious, you just exclaim to yourself. Nobody is asking you. You just exclaimed, Lami aoy. Lami aoy. When the person who prepared food heard you, that you exclaimed to yourself, Lami aoy, he or she would really feel fulfilled because you are liking her preparation or his preparation. Lami kaayo, it means very delicious. If you remember, kaayo is an intensifier. So, lami kaayo, very delicious. Usually, you say it when the person asks you, how is the food? How's the food? You can say, lami, or you can say, lami kaayo. Very delicious. Or, you could say, lami kaayo ang pagkaon. To specify it. Lami kaayo ang pagkaon. The food is very delicious. Lami kaayo ang pagkaon. Pagkaon means food. Lami kaayo ang pagkaon. And then you should say salamat. Lami kayong pagkaon. Salamat means thank you. Daghang salamat means thank you very much or many thanks. It is really very important to appreciate presence especially when you are visiting a place. And when you use Bisaya, they would greatly appreciate it even further because they can understand it. So whether it be their appearance, their their properties, their their car, their things, or even their food, it is very important to utter pleasant words and phrases. Let's give positive energy, everyone. Now it's quiz time. I hope that you are ready. So I will be I will be presenting the um, English word or phrase and then you are going to guess you're going to guess the Bisaya word okay let's start number one yes I told you this is a 10 item quiz test yourself number one handsome handsome five four three two one Yes, guapo. Number two, beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful girl. Yeah. How would you say um, the girl is beautiful in Bisaya? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's guapa. Number three, nice or beautiful when you are appreciating a thing. How will you say it? Five, four, three, two, one. Very good. That's nindut or guapo. Number four, delicious. Delicious. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's lami. Number five very delicious five four three two one yep that's lami kaayo next number um, six. Oh, number seven you have a nice car five four three two one Nindut ka og sakyanan. Or if your answer is guapo ka og sakyanan, then that's also correct. How about you have a nice voice? Five, four, three, 
to one. Yes, that's nindot ka og tingog or guapo ka og tingog. How about I love you? I love you in a deeper way. I love you. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's gihigugma tika. If you answered uh, palanga tika, then that's also acceptable. But when you just really mean I love you, you can use gihigugmatika. Love. 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 Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's gugma. How about someone you love? How do you, how do you describe them? Or, I mean, how do you call them? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's ga. This is the shortest one. Okay, if you answered palanga or if you answered panga, that's also correct. I just placed there the shortest one. Ga. Okay, good job. If you learned from this lesson, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Always remember that it is good to spread positivity. So I hope that you can use those pleasant words and phrases when you encounter Bisaya people on your travel or maybe you have Bisaya friends in your workplace or you have a Bisaya loved one. Don't forget to use these words and inform me how it went. See you next time in Bisaya Classroom. Hello everyone, good morning. This is Jonah and you are here in the Bisaya Classroom. Today, we are going to discuss the useful Bisaya words and phrases when traveling. I believe that you are here in my channel because you are planning to travel to places which mainly speaks Bisaya as their language. Don't worry, after this small tutorial, you will be able to communicate with the locals with ease. At the end of this lesson, these are the expected outcomes. Number one, you will recognize the most useful words or phrases when traveling. Number two, you will understand directions in Bisaya, especially when using public transportation. Also, when you are asking for help from, for, from locals, when you are asking for directions from them, it will help. This lesson will help you to understand them properly. And lastly, you will learn how to use the Bisaya words and phrases when asking for help or in cases of emergency. At the end of this lesson also, you will be able to answer the short quiz. It is a 10-item quiz. This quiz would help you check yourself if you really learn something. So I would really advise that you will take down notes. Okay, you should have your pen and paper so that uh, your time will not be wasted. It will be a worthwhile learning session. But before we start the lesson, I want you to, or I request you to please subscribe so that you will be notified on my next Bisaya lessons, which will be opened in this channel. I hope that everybody is ready. We shall start. Lugar lang. Lugar lang. Lugar lang. It means just drop me here. It is usually said when you are riding on a public transportation like a jeepney, a tricycle, or a cab. In the Philippines, mostly in the Philippines, when you are riding on a public transportation, there's no such thing as a button where you can press and the, and the driver would be notified that you would want to be dropped on that specific area. Okay, so in the Philippines, if you want to be dropped on a specific area, you need to notify the driver by saying, Lugar lang, lugar lang, lugar lang, bayad, bayad, bayad. Bayad means your payment or your fare. 
Bayad palihog. Bayad palihog. It means, please pass my fare or please pass my payment to the driver. When you are riding on a public transportation, specifically on a jeepney, sometimes you are seated quite far away from the driver. And when you are giving your fare, you need the help of, of your fellow passengers. So, you should say, Bayad palihog. Palihog means please, if you can remember our previous lesson on polite words and phrases in Visaya. Palihog means please. So, it's not enough for you to just say bayad, you should add palihog. Bayad palihog. And when they do so, you should say salamat, which means thank you. Bayad palihog. Sukli. 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 It means your change. Kambyo. 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 It also means change. Sukli and kambyo are used interchangeably when speaking about your change after you pay. Sibug. 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 It means you should move, you should make room, and you should give space. So when you are using the public transportation in the Philippines, um, you should not stay on one area. For example, you are seated just uh, near the, the entrance of the jeepney and you want to stay there, but there's an elderly who came, you should see book, meaning you should make room for that specific passenger. Um, the Filipinos are very considerate, so uh, they just have this initiative in their mind that when somebody comes in, they need to see book, see book. Sibugi palihog. Sibugi palihog. It means please move or make room or give space. So usually the one who says this is uh, the conductor of the, the public transportation. So he would say sibugi palihog. So when somebody says sibugi palihog, you need to have the initiative to follow. So you should make room. Okay? Sibugi palihog. Katood mo sa, oh, take note, this is very important, especially when you're lost. Katood mo sa, blank, it means, do you know where is the? It is a uh, very basic question when you are asking for a place or when you're asking for directions to a destination. So, katood mo sa, and then you just add the, the place what, uh, where you're going. Katood mo sa mall. Katood mo sa beach, or you could specify the place, like Katood mo sa Gaisano Mall, or Katood mo sa Victoria Plaza. Liko. Liko is a verb which means turn. Liko. Turn. Tuo. Tuo means right, or the right side. Tuo. Wala, it means left side or left. Wala, wala. Liko sa tuo. Liko sa tuo, meaning you should turn right. Liko sa tuo. Liko sa wala, it means you should turn left. Liko sa wala, you should turn left. Sa likod, it means at the back. Where is the church? Salikod, meaning at the back. Salikod sa, and then you could add the place. Okay. Where is the church? Salikod sa school, means at the back of the school. Salikod sa school. Salikod sa market. Salikod sa subdivision. At bang, it means in front. At bang. At bang sa, you just add the, um, the place to point out a landmark. So you should say, when you are asking about uh, directions for a certain beach, you would say, 
katuod mo sa um, Quaco Beach Resort? And they would reply, Ah, at bang sa GSIS? At bang sa terminal? Okay? At bang sa Duol. Duol means near. Duol. Duol sa means near the and then you add the place. Duol sa church. Duol sa market. Duol sa stall. Duol ra. It means just near. For example, uh, you are asking, um, is it far? Um, is the beach far from here? And the local would reply, hmm, Duol ra. It means it's just near. Malakaw ra. Malakaw ra. It means just walking distance or just a walking distance. Okay? Malakaw ra. Is the beach near? Duol ra. Duol ra. Malakaw ra. Okay? So, you have the... Uh, you can analyze if you need a car or you just walk. Layo. 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 It means far. Layo. Far. Is the mall far from here? Layo. Mm. Layo. Layo kaayo. Okay? Kaayo is added because it is an intensifier in Visaya. So, layo kaayo, it means very far. Layo kaayo. Very far. Dito. Meaning there. Dito. Dili delikado dito. Dili delikado dito. This phrase means, is it safe there? Dili delikado dito. Luwas dito. Luwas dito. It's the same with dili delikado dito. They mean the same. Is it safe there? So you can choose between these two phrases. Dili delikado dito. Luwas dito. But mostly, for example, if you go to <coughs> Davao City, they would really understand this phrase. Dili delikado dito. Okay? Luas dito is also understandable. So, if you prefer luas dito because it's shorter, then you can use it. O. It means yes. O. 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 Dili. Meaning no. Dili. Dili. Pila. Means how much. Pila. 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 Pila pa masahe. Pila pa masahe. It means, how much is the fare? Pila pa masahe. Mahal. Mahal. It means expensive. Mahal. Mahala uy. Mahala uy. It means, it's so expensive. Mahala uy. For uh, you usually hear this when um, you are ha bargaining for a prize on a public transportation, and um, the fare is so expensive for you, it's so mahal. So you would reply to the driver, Mahala uy. And then you um, you would look for this word, barato. Barato. It means cheap. Or, it's just a cheap price. Barato. So, as a, a person on a travel, or as a, a, a person who travels but is a budgetarian, you must always look for barato fares. Okay. Pahangyu ako palihog. This is a very important phrase for you to survive. <laughs> In, if you are a budgetarian. Pahangyu ako palihog. Pahangyu ako palihog. Pahangyu ako palihog. It means, please let me bargain for the price. For example, 
if the price is so expensive? And you exclaimed, Mahal oy. They would, you should say, Mahal nyo ako palihog. You are asking the driver, Please let me bargain for the price. And the driver would reply, Pila imu hangyo. Pila imu hangyo. So when the driver replies you with this, it means he is um, open for bargaining. So it means how much can you afford or how much is your bargain price? Pila imu hangyo. Of course, you should um, uh, give a price which is reasonable. reasonable. Okay. And then... Um, it's up to you how much will you be able to agree on. And then, tara. Tara means let's go. Tara. So when the driver says tara, means he agrees with the price he bargained. Tara. Largana. It also means let's go, but largana is commonly said when in a vehicle and you are asking the driver to start driving or going. Largana. Largana. Hapit na. It means almost. Hapit na. Almost. Hapit na mularga ang blank. Hapit na mularga ang blank. Hapit na mularga ang blank. It means it's almost time for the vehicle to go. So in this phrase, you should specify the uh, the vehicle like Hapit na mular ka ang bus? Hapit na mular ka ang jeep? Hapit na mular ka ang train? Okay? Biyahe Biyahe It means travel or trip Biyahe 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 Unsang oras ang biyahe? Unsang oras ang biyahe? It means what time is the travel or the trip? Unsang oras ang biyahe? Okay, this would always come in handy when uh, you are in a tight um, schedule and you went to the public transportation terminal and you will ask, Unsang oras ang biyahe sa bus? Unsang oras ang biyahe sa train? Unsang oras ang biyahe? You just add sa. Uh, to connect it to the to the noun which will follow. Unsang oras ang biyahe sa sa boat? Unsang oras ang biyahe sa motor? Motorcycle? Okay? Uh, yeah, this is the one that I'm talking about. <laughs> Unsang oras ang biyahe sa ka, sa taxi? Unsang oras ang biyahe sa bus? Unsang oras ang biyahe sa jeep? Okay. Kanus a ang biyahe sa. This is just um. Uh, this is just just um similar, but kanus a is mostly asking for the date. Okay. Unsang oras is about the time, while kanus a ang biyahe sa. It's asking about mainly the date. Kanus a ang biyahe sa bus, or kanus a ang biyahe sa jeep okay or if you really want to be more specific you could say kanus a ang biyahe sa bus um for for buhol or kanus a ang biyahe sa <laughs> there's no such a thing as a bus for buhol kanus a ang biyahe sa sa bangka or barko barko means boat Kanusa ang biyahe sa barko for Bohol? Buuli na ko. Buuli na ko, it means I will go home. Muuli na ko. Muuli na ko. I will go home. Pauli na ko. Pauli na ko. It means I'm on my way home. Pauli na ko. Di ko katuod. Tiko katuod means I don't know the way or I don't know the directions. So when somebody asks, do you know the how to go to or let's let's be, let's translate it to Bisaya. Katuod ka sa 
SM, you would reply, Di ko katood in case you don't know. Di ko katood. Di ko katood pa uli. Di ko katood pa uli. It means, I don't know the way or the directions to go back or to go home. Di ko katood pa uli. You can tell this to the locals if you are asking for help for you to go home. You should say, Di ko katood pa uli. Tabang is a noun. It means help. Okay? Tabang. Tabang. It means you are shouting for help. Or you can say it in a gentleman. Tabang. Meaning you are requesting for help. Tabangi ko ninyo. It means uh, you are asking the locals or the persons there to, to help you. Tabangi ko ninyo. Di ko katood pa uli. Mm, like that. Okay? So, if you want help from people to assist you on your way home, you could say, Tabangi ko ninyo. Di ko katood pa uli. Okay, next is, Gusto na ko mo uli. Gusto na ko mo uli. It means, I want to go home now. Gusto na ko mo uli. Gusto na ko mo uli. Okay, so I hope that you have take down notes. You can actually pause this video if you want to. So, I hope that everybody is ready for our 10 item quiz. Okay, so I will be showing you the English word. And as much as possible, you will try to test yourself if, um, if you know the Bisaya word for it. Okay, let's start. Number one, travel or trip. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Biahe. Biahe. If you got it correctly, congratulations. Biahe. Number two, help. Help. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yes. Tabang. Tabang. Very good. Number three, left. Left. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. It means wala. Okay? Wala. Good job. Next. Right. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yes, that's tuu. Tuu. Near. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Very good. That's duol. Next. Far. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yes, that's layo. Doing good so far. Let's go. Let's go. Yes, that's tara. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I just um, pressed the next one. I didn't count, but if you know the answer, good. How much is the fare? You remember how much is the fare? I'll be giving you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yes, that's pila pamasahe. Just drop me here. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yes, that's lugar lang. Lugar lang. Good. No. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yep, that's Dili. Good job. 
Um, I'm so happy that you were able to answer those questions. If you were not able to answer it, just review this video and test yourself again. If you learned from this lesson, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. See you next time in Bisaya Classroom. Hello, my name is Jonah and welcome again to Bisaya Classroom. Today, we will be discussing amazing facts about Bisaya. Are you ready? Did you know that Bisaya is not only spoken in the Philippines, it is also spoken in some places of Brunei and Sarawak, Malaysia. It is called Bisaya or Southern Bisaya or they call it Tutong Language 1. That is why if you are going to search for that specific indigenous language, you will see that it has similarities with Bisaya in the Visayas and Mindanao Islands. However, the Bisaya in Brunei and in some places in Malaysia, they cannot relate intellectually. So it's just the name, but the language structure itself is different. But it's still amazing to know that Bisaya is not only specific for the Philippines, it can also be for Brunei and Malaysia. Amazing, isn't it? Did you know that there are estimated 15.8 million to 20 million people in the Philippines who speak Bisaya? Yes, Bisaya is the second most spoken languages in the Philippines next to Tagalog. Amazing, isn't it? Did you know that Duterte is not the first Bisaya president of the Philippines? Yes, you heard it right. Although he is quite famous, he is not the first Bisaya president. We have Sergio Osmeña. Sergio Osmeña is the first president that was hailed from Visayas, specifically in Cebu City. Next is Carlos P. Garcia, who was hailed from Bohol. Although we are not sure if, we, if he really practiced Bisaya as his language, but most people in Bohol speak Bisaya, so most likely he is. And the third one, yes, that's President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Amazing, isn't it? Did you know that in the late 80s, some schools, specifically in Cebu or some places in Visayas, they actually require their students to sing the Philippine national anthem, Lupang Hinirang, to be sang in its Visaya version, which is called Yutang Tabunon. After some time, it was prohibited that the Philippine National Anthem entitled Lupaginira should be sung in Bisaya version. Along with other versions like Spanish and English, the Lupanghinirang should be sung in its original Tagalog version according to Republic Act 8491. As 2019, Misamis Oriental LGU has received a lot of backlash after the video has spread out that they are singing the national anthem in its Bisaya version, Yutang Tabunan. Although it is prohibited nowadays, it is still quite nice to know that there is a Bisaya version for our beloved national anthem, Lupang Hinira. Amazing, isn't it? The last amazing fact about Bisaya is it is a very easy language to learn. So if you have nothing to do, learning a language is a good exercise for your brain. So if you really want to know Bisaya, please check out my lessons. I will put the link down below for my Bisaya lesson playlist. Amazing, isn't it? 
if you reach at this point of the video and you have learned five amazing facts about Bisaya language. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Help me grow. Your subscription will um, make me um, inspired to keep on going. Mega shout out to my friends who turned out to be YouTube vloggers over this quarantine season. First one would be Arnold and Arjun channel. They are handling a flower arrangement um, channel. Also Carl Ernesto and uh, we have Lance Vlog. She is uh, handling a channel about rabbits. We have Rubisa Balia. She is handling a vlog about huskies with her own very uh, very own husky. And we also have uh, Winnie Abayan and Josefa Oklida. They are uploading a lot of videos about daily lives. And we also have my dear Madeline Heronimo. She is um, having her YouTube channel about her bags, so send bags. And of course, um, Flor Delise. She is uh, having a lifestyle YouTube um, channel. So please check them out and please subscribe them. Please keep them going. Amazing, isn't it? If you are still here and you did not click out yet, thank you, thank you so much for finishing my video. I hope to see you next time in the Bisaya Classroom.